At the moment, I'm arresting you oh, on suspicion of theft of a motor vehicle on section four. Oh, get off me! I told you to get off me. You are under arrest. Get off! It was a cold, dark night in February when I was patrolling the M11. I was allocated to attend a collision between a motorcyclist and a one vehicle. I had to put in what is called a rolling roadblock, so I had to bring all the traffic down to a stop um, to be able to get to the injured uh, motorcyclist. As I arrived at the scene, I could see um, some vehicles parked on the hard shoulder. In the central reservation, um, there was a motorbike with one rider who was stood in the central reservation, a little bit dazed, holding his helmet. Get your bike, put your phone in your pockets. Put your phone in your pockets. I went up to speak to him. He didn't respond to me. Um, I could see that he had a couple of grazes, but he didn't appear too injured. Get your bike, this bike, over there. Do it now. Come on, I'll help you. That's it, well done. Keep going. So um, with him and my help, we moved his motorbike from the central reservation over to the hard shoulder. Once I'd done that, I left him with his motorbike and I walked up to the other uh, vehicle that was involved and spoke to that motorist. I was only a matter of minutes and when I'd turned around and come back, the rider of the motorbike had disappeared, leaving his motorcycle on the hard shoulder. Once I'd realised that the motorcyclist was missing from the side of the motorway, I was concerned. So my main concern was for the cyclist's safety because he could wander back out onto the carriageway. The other motorists on the road were travelling past. It's a 70 mile an hour road. Um, so what I decided to do was to call up for our helicopter unit to come and help locate him. So the police helicopter arrived and conducted a search of the surrounding areas, all the shrubbery, uh, for the missing motorcyclist. The helicopter couldn't find him at that point. Um, however, when I was back in my car travelling northbound on the M11, I spotted the motorcyclist I had originally seen at the collision on the southbound track. I radioed through to our control room to let them know where I was because I was on my own at the side of the motorway. There was no rolling blocking and the cars were moving fast and I was approaching this motorcyclist to detain him at this point. As I walked towards him, he stopped and I arrested him. As I arrested him, I applied a handcuff to his left wrist. At that point of applying a handcuff, he violently resisted me um, and he was trying to push me, it felt, into the main carriageway. He pulled me down the bank and pulled me over his shoulder. The next thing I remember was a massive thud and I was on my back. Get off me! I told you to get off me! You are under arrest! Get off! I, I, I remember having one of the handcuffs on him and I thought I couldn't let go because if I was to let go of that handcuff, um, he'd have both hands free at that point. Get off! No. I was in fear. I was down a very dark embankment. Um, I was very much aware I was on my own. I couldn't get to my radio to press the emergency button for, for it felt like forever. I know it wasn't. I'm not letting go, mate. I'm not. I had to hold on to one of his hands and with the other with the handcuff. I couldn't let go, so I couldn't tell my colleagues where I was. The only thing that brought me a bit of comfort was the helicopter above me. He lit the place up so I knew that he must be telling them where I was so my colleagues could come and try, find and help me. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. I just knew that I had to carry on and keep hold of him for as long as I could until help arrived. Get off of me! You are hurting me! During the assault, um, I was in pain. I told the man this. I was shouting it. Um, when he was trying to escape me at that point, he pulled my hand so violently from the handcuff, I felt my thumb and hand break. It was at that point that I couldn't hold on to him any longer. He got up and he ran away. Triple T's. He's in the woods, he's assaulted me. I can't keep hold of him any longer. He's on foot. 
As he was running away, I could hear the sounds of the sirens of my colleagues turning up. I just was so relieved when they, had, they arrived. Um, they came along, run down the embankment and arrested him. Police officer, taser! Get down off the ground! You okay? Yeah. You right, Jill? Yeah. You all right? Get down! On the floor! <sighs> do, you need, do you need a cuddle? <laughs> Oh, I definitely do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you hurt anywhere? I'll be alright. All right. Are you alright? Yeah. Whilst out on patrol and being allocated to go to a road traffic collision, I don't expect to attend a collision and be assaulted by one of the injured parties. This is really unusual. My main fear when I go to these type of accidents on the motorway is the fast moving traffic of other vehicles, hence the reason we put safety procedures in place and I wear my fluorescent jacket. This isn't a, a normal thing to happen and I didn't expect to be assaulted on this occasion at all. I've been a police officer for 20 years. Um, during the assault my, I had bones broken in my hand. I had to have six weeks away from frontline duties. However, how I've coped with that, the support of my colleagues, they've helped me um, with getting back onto frontline duties. Um, I am back out on frontline duties now. Um, I was a little bit apprehensive about what was going to happen if I go to another job. However, I've got myself through that. I'm back out there now and keeping the public safe.